our code starts by this defining this structure susp which is just a way for us to represent what is a suspended task as we know when we do a yield we want to say what we what are we yielding is it number one is it number two is it number three so what suspended is going to get is basically two things it's going to keep the yield value the yielded value right in this case let's say one would be here and then what is okay okay is just going to be the continuation and because this is cps it's going to re represent the okay continuation so this is what we're storing in the suspended task so what does a yield do well a yield is very simple it's it's a cps monadic operation and what will it do it will create a suspended value and it will pass the suspended the yielded value and the OK continuation right so this is going to be the final result that we're going to be um, using so if I have some code like yield X right and the Y is just going to be void always so you don't really need uh, to do anything with Y basically what this is saying is if you have some kind of yield in your do notation what's going to happen is that it's not going to call OK, and instead it's going to return this different value, right? So before we were using OK to, to communicate return value. Now we can do two things. Either we actually use that lambda for OK or for error, or we just return a susp, right? So we can return three things. We can return the result of OK. We can return, return the result of error, or we can just return the suspended task. So what is the suspended task? What can I do with the suspended task? Well, I can get the suspended value, right? Sus minus value that returns that value, or I can resume it. Resuming it is just taking the continuation and passing void to it because the yield returns nothing, right? This is how we were interpreting yield. So it just means that if you have code like I showed you in the example here yield returns nothing so that's why the continuation which would be this whole code should should not do anything with well it should take that void right so that's why there's no assignment here but how do we chain things together well this is not just a CPS computation this is a suspendable CPS computation and a suspendable CPS computation has to be consumed by either a for each or by a run list. So first let's look at for each. For each is here. Where is for each? Okay. So what do we do with for each? So what is M and what is F? M is going to be the monadic code. So in this case, it is this whole thing, right? And what is F? F is going to be the code, the code, whoops the code that you run on each iteration, right? So it's going to be this lambda, correct? So what do we do with it? Well, the for each itself has to be a monadic operation. So we have the OK and error. And what are we going to do? We're going to, essentially, we have to iterate over all yield points, right? Whenever someone calls a yield, in this case, one, two, and three. So what do we do? We call our monadic CPS operation, right? And what we do is we feed it a new OK channel. Okay, so a new OK result. And we pass the same error. So if there's an error, this is this will abort the whole thing. But if there's no error, what we're doing is we're going to compute the, the monad. We're going to call it, and we're going to pass our OK. And then we're going to get a result. And it could be one of two things. Either that monad terminated OK, and then it will just return that value, which we will have access to it, or that monad was suspended. And if it was suspended, we will get a suspended task. So what do we do? For each yield point, we check if the result is a yielded value, is a suspended task, sorry. If it is a suspended task, then what we do, we call F and pass the suspended value and then continue. And what resume does is it will call the continuation with void. Otherwise, we will 
we reached the end, so there are no more suspended points. And now we're ready to use the OK that was provided. And we're going to pass the result of the computation, which is going to be the last result, right? It's going to be whatever is fed into this. And this is how do we implement uh, for each. So how do we use it? Let's look at it again. If we have yield one, two, and three, what for each is going to be doing is going to be doing the each function. And it's going to call um, iteratively. First, it's going to run this whole thing. Once we evaluate this bit, we're going to get a suspended object. The suspended object is going to unpack the one. It's going to pass it to this lambda. And then that is going to run the continuation. It's going to pass this whole thing. It's going to evaluate that, but it's passing void, right? Because the re re result of yield is void. And then it's going to do the same thing again, right? It's going to call yield two. That is going to return another suspended value. Suspended value, take the two, pass it to this lambda, take the continuation, pass it void. Now do the same thing. From yield, we get a suspended value. We get a suspended value, right? The the structure. And then we take the the yielded value and we pass it to this lambda, which says got three. And then we go back here. No more things. We just return whatever is returned by this string, which will go through that lambda, right? Which will then go here and we'll return it in the OK. And that's why return OK, you get the string that was returned by this. Right? So if I do hello world, I get hello world. OK. But the crucial point here is just understanding intuitively what is going on here. And just know that this exists in, in JavaScript and Python and C Sharp, um, this yield keyword. And finally, there's another thing, which is it would be very nice if there's this notion of yield to just look at it as a list, right? To just convert, coerce the whole thing and, and store it in a list. Can we do that? Yes. So I implemented this two list thing that takes uh, suspendable uh, operation or suspendable continuation. And then what we do, we go over each one and it works exactly like for each, but now, let's see, let me show you. Now I can actually store the results. So I can convert this, this yielded computation, right? These three values as a list, right? And then I'm gonna run it. So let's see how this works. It's very simple. Okay, so you see here, what we, what did we do? We take these, this, um, in Python, this is known as a generator. So a generator is something that yields, has yield points. What we do, we take all these yield points, we convert it to a list, we store that list in L, and then we print that list. Re recall that in in this monadic operation, whenever you want to do something that is not a monadic operation, you have to wrap it in pure. You have to call this pure thing. So that's why we're, that's why pure is surrounding the printf. So we're printing to screen and we say got list. See, this is where we, we have it. Add a little arrow. Right, as you can see, got list. And then what is the return value? We're just returning the list. We can even add, add another number. So let's do cons of zero, just so you see that we can return whatever we want. So we return zero, one, two, three. Okay, because the list that we got was whatever is yielded here. So you can even do yields 10, just to, so that you can see. Now I get one, two, three, 10. And that's basically it. That's just to show you that with this abstraction of control flow, now we are able to add yet another feature without changing the language at all, just with the power of lambdas. And this is very powerful. This is ve that, this is what I think is very cool about about uh, the notion of monads and all that. Of course, you do need the syntactic sugar for do, um, just to make your code a bit briefer. But in general. It's really cool stuff.